Hello everybody, welcome back to the Dugout Football Channel where it is time for another episode of A Chat With. I think this is episode 9 we are on now and I've been joined by a very special guest. It is Mr Glenn Kitely who's going to talk all things Arsenal and I'm pretty sure that he'll be hoping for a much better season than last season. Glenn, how you doing my friend? I'm absolutely good. Um, I'm wondering why you left it until episode nine. Is, is it because Arsenal have dropped that much on the Premier League table as well? So Arsenal comes <laughs> after every other team. It's okay, Doug. It's okay, Doug. Next season, I'm um, hopefully we will improve, and I'm very good. Um, thank you for having me um, to discuss Arsenal. Thank you for having me for, um, to represent Arsenal. Oh, ready to go. Ready to go for the new season. Yeah, I, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your What are your upcoming thoughts ahead of the new season? Get top four. Simple as that, get top four. But um, yeah, last season was really different because um, last season started like almost in the middle of September. So all the games were really congested. There was even that to take away FA Cup replays and stuff like that. So next season will definitely be different um, in terms of games and um, congestion. I really actually enjoyed the games being, because last season, there weren't really a lot of games being at the same time. All of the games are really separate. So you could get a view of each team. You could watch every single team if you have a Saturday off. So that was a good thing. So next season is back to normal. It's very different for us because we have no European football for the first time since I started supporting Arsenal, basically. So it's going to be something new. No games during midweek. We're just going to be watching all of the other guys. But yeah, something new, something new. So I don't mind being out um, out of the Europa League or Champions League this season. So let's see how it's what it works out. But yeah, different season from last. But, but back to normal. Yeah, definitely, and I think would you say would you say that not having European football might actually benefit you for this season? Now that you can basically focus on the league, and you can focus on the League Cup and the FA Cup as well. I'm hoping so because um, the previous seasons, in terms of um, personnel in the team, the other seasons you really had to have a lot of players because of so many different competitions. So we literally had to have two full teams, 11 players, 11 players, and another like six extra players to cover for all those competitions. So right now we can afford to get rid of a lot of players we've usually cried about getting rid of. Those are the likes of um, Williams and players like that. Most of the youngsters, you can take them out on loan. Right now we don't need three or four goalkeepers like we've had the last few seasons. We can um, handle two goalkeepers and maybe a young um, goalkeeper coming through. That is the first thing. About the game's um, congestion, I'm hoping we can now focus on the Premier League because a few seasons back, you'd remember Chelsea were out of the Champions League and Europa League, and I think they actually won the league that same season. So I'm not saying we're going to win the league, yeah. but it gives you more focus. It gives you a whole five days to train the team for Arteta. So basically no excuses on Saturday and Sunday when you're playing. Because right now as well, we've played two games against... Um, Obviously, you, I know you follow the Scottish League, so we've played against Ibanian and Rangers, and it doesn't look good so far. It doesn't look that um, um, appealing so far. Obviously, our games against Inter Milan and maybe Everton have been cancelled. So, obviously, I don't know how quickly they can arrange friendlies, but we might be down to four games in, in, in terms of friendly. So, mm -hmm. I don't think that is enough time to see the likes of Lokong and the likes of Ben White who are going to sign. I don't think that will be enough time. So, Without the Europa League as well and without those kind of competitions, we are having to be ready for the Premier League games immediately. You have no time for experiments. There's no Europa League to experiment. We don't have these friendly matches to experiment since a couple of them have been cancelled. So those five days in between are really, really important to train the team and uh, try different things before the Premier League games. And obviously, over the years, we've not done well in the Carabao Cup, um, in the Carling Cup. Obviously, different yeah. games, different seasons. So hoping this season we can have um, a good shot at it, at least get to the final or something, and then also get back our FA Cup trophy. We all know that is Arsenal's trophy. So <laughs> let's hope we get back to winning that trophy next season. So I think I think it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. And also we will now talk about transfers in and out of Arsenal. A uh, couple of ends. Um, if, if I if I butcher this name horribly, then I'm very, very sorry. Albert Sambi Lakonga and Nuno Tavares. And I have put in brackets Ben White. That should be completed very, very uh, shortly as well. Um, happy with those incomings? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Nuno Tavares, 
also as you still don't know how to pronounce his name right it could be Tavares or Tavares it could be any but same thing so first of all Nuno Tavares we needed a backup left back very very much like a lot like Tierney is kind of injury prone unfortunately and every time he left last season we've had to play players in that position who are not actually left backs we've had to play Xhaka we've had to play Saka in that position we've had to look for players like Cedric to play in that position so that that isn't ideal especially if you're trying to attack we all know how much the likes of Tierney and Robertson bomb forward the moment you take that out of your team the likes of Xhaka cannot do that and basically your left side is dead when uh, you take yeah. out Tierney on that side so we had to use most of the right side we had to take Pepe to that side we had to take Saka to that side to balance it out so Nuno Tavares is very good and he can actually use his right foot he has a couple of advantages He's young, so uh, over the years we've seen us sign a lot of old players, Williams, Czechs, Lichsteiners, those kind of players, and if it doesn't work out for them, you can't sell them because they're already old. There's no team that's going to pay for them. For someone like Anuno Tavares, 21 years of age, if it doesn't work out in a couple of years, we can try and sell him for the same money, 10 million, 12 million, and get the value back. So that is the first one. For Lokonga, over uh, the last couple of years, people we've signed a, a, a couple of players thinking, they're going to be fringe players, like a Gwenduzi, for example. We signed him thinking Gwenduzi is just going to become a backup, but he actually joined and he became a, became a mainstay the first season, played in the first couple of games against City and Chelsea. So for now, people are expecting us to sign another midfielder, maybe an Awar. People have mentioned Bissoumas, yeah. Neves. So if we don't sign those players, it leaves us with Lokonga as a starter. So... He might, uh, we might actually, he might actually be needed for more games than he actually thinks he'll be needed for. But right now, yeah. I don't think it's up to put too much pressure on them. For now, I'll just um, have him as a backup as well. So as of now, we've signed two backup players. We still haven't sorted out our first team. And Ben White is the first one. I think Ben White is a direct replacement for Luis in the first team. He'll be playing with Gabriel there. I think he's better than what we have in terms of quality. We've had holding there... Funny enough, um, the day we are recording this podcast is uh, actually the fifth anniversary of Holding joining Arsenal. So Holding, if Holding, um, we've already seen enough of Holding the last five years. We already know what, what you get to get from him. A couple of mistakes yeah. here and there, a couple of headers here and there in the opposition box. He'll play at least 30 of those games, but he won't give you anything else. So I think we are actually trying to sign Ben White to be like a, like a Thiago Silva for Chelsea, to be like a Van Dijk for Liverpool, for example. So we are taking the risk on him, hoping he can become the, the, the difference we need. So I think he'll add a lot, a lot to our team in terms of um, passing accuracy, defending speed, all that um, positioning, a bit of experience, Premier League experience as well, even though he's just been there for one year. And the one most important thing Ben White will bring to Arsenal is... The, the fact that he actually, last season he played 30, I think 36 games out of the 38 mm-hmm. in a congestion, congested season, as we've said. 36 games is very hard. There is no one at Arsenal who, has, who played 36 games last season. I think Tini was around 20 or something. Gabriel missed about six to eight games. Holding missed a couple of games. Pablo Murray missed half of the season with an injury. Cedric missed half of the season. Bellerin missed so many games. So, We've never had any defenders who can play a lot of games. So Ben White can bring that to the team. The previous season at Leeds in the championship, he played all 46 games, all in a yeah. championship season. So that, that uh, attribute about him is very important. So at least you're bringing something we don't have. Yeah, definitely. Um, that, that, that Aston Arbor is amazing that you've had nobody to you know, play 36 36 games, that, that is, that is uh, uh, amazing. Uh, as far as the outs are concerned, obviously uh, Guendouzi and Saliba have gone out alone and obviously David Louise, um has you know left the, uh, left the club. Um, now, we will obviously be talking about uh, what we thought would have been an out, but he has just signed a new contract. Emil Smith-Rowe has signed a new contract and he has been given... The number 10, uh, vacated by Mesut Ozil, uh, of course. Uh, how excited are you for um, his, his season ahead? Oh, very, very much. Let's be honest. Last season, November and December, I think we lost like every single game. Wolves, Burnley's, Everton's, all of them beat us home and away. So the moment to go to after Christmas, I think that was our Christmas present. We got Smith into the team. 
and we got yeah. Saka into the team and literally our fortunes changed. I could I still today don't believe I don't actually uh believe that we were 15th in December. That's very very bad. So they literally came into the team and changed our fortunes completely. We beat West Brom, we beat Chelsea and um most of the season they covered for us in a lot of positions, a lot of games. He can play on the left just like Saka. He can play as a number 10 just like Saka. So they covered a lot of positions. Listen, right now we are we every Arsenal fan wants a number 10. We all want an attacking midfielder so that we don't put too much pressure on Smith Rowe. But if we actually decide to splash the cash um for for a central midfielder next to Partey and splash the cash for a new right back and then maybe get um a, a backup for Smith Rowe, I wouldn't mind. Obviously we need the Madison. So if Madison joins and Smith Rowe is still in the team, I think that makes us definitely stronger. Last season, the moment you got one injury, like an Aubameyang or a Saka, the bench wasn't good enough. You had players like Nelson on the bench, players who've never played. You had players like an El Nani on the bench, the players who literally would you'd have to change your style of play and your approach because those players are not the same. They won't give you the same. So I think if you have a Madison in the team and you have Smith Rowe coming off the bench, that's definitely very very different so for me madison as well he didn't play every single game for leicester last season so smith rowe wouldn't be surprised if he gets a lot of minutes as well and that is why it looks like we'll have to get rid of the likes of nelson because i don't think they last space in this team yeah. if we have pepe we have saka we have obamian playing in midfield we have um, the likes of um, pate and there's been talks about a war and all those kind of players if we sign two midfielders smith rowe still very very good player very very good signing i'm happy to see we are changing our approach in the transfer market and in the contract situation over the years sanchez left on a free giroud left on a free um ramsey left on a free so many important players left on a free wilshire kazola we never got one penny for any of those players sanchez a player we could have actually got like 80 million for um ramsey on his day we would have got at least 35 million for Um Kazola in his day would have got at least 30 million 25 million for so Smith Rowe it's good that you're tying down these players I know Aubameyang didn't have the best of the seasons but we tied him down to a contract we tied down Saka Tieni Smith Rowe so it's good that we're changing our approach um Leno very soon will probably sign a new contract as well so I'm happy we're changing our approach um in terms of the contract as well All right. Yeah, 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 definitely. As far as any more ends are concerned, obviously you did mention uh, James Madison. There's been a lot of talk and speculation about Aaron Ramsdale. Would that be someone you would want to come in? No, my choice would actually be Sam Johnston from West Brom. I think he's a better goalkeeper. Ramsdale 30 something million. I mean if we if we sign him for 32 million then that has to be like a replacement for Leno, not a replacement for Martinez. I don't think mm-hmm. we'll sign a goalkeeper for 32 million to have on the bench. I'd be very surprised if he completed that deal. I'd be 100% surprised. But we definitely need a backup goalkeeper. Um Ranason is leaving mm-hmm. and so Okonko, um the young goalkeeper who just signed a first team contract against Ibania. Those kind of mistakes we cannot afford. Those kind of mistakes in the Premier League. He's definitely not experienced. Leno, we never know when he can get injured. He doesn't even have to get injured. If a goalkeeper picks up a red card three games out and you're facing like a Tottenham in a derby in a city, you need a very good goalkeeper. So I think Ramsdale's Premier League experience has been here, even though he's been relegated twice. He's been here, he knows the teams, he knows what to expect when he's facing a Salah or something, he knows what to expect when he's facing um, a Gabriel Jesus or something. So I think getting a Premier League experience um, goalkeeper is good. But for me, 32 million is too much. That is actually overspending. And I'm not sure why Sheffield have not accepted it yet. 32 million for Ramsdale, that is a steal. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking it's a 20 million goalkeeper, but his value went up because he was picked in the Euros um, team. That's the only reason yeah. why he went up, because Southgate picked him. So you, you, you would have Johnston rather than Ramsdale? 100%. I even, I even did a video on him. The moment we played our last game, I said I wanted Johnston. If Leno left, I wanted Johnston to come and replace him. We saw him I think last season he had the most saves in the Premier League and he was yeah. playing for West Brom obviously he's going to have uh, more shots against him when you're playing uh, for West Brom but the kind of saves he was making very comfortable I remember against City when um Billy's last game when he was sacked for West Brom before Allardyce joined the nil nil draw against City that was Johnston I think he made like 13 14 saves in that game those kind of performances we need them uh, those kind of performances in the team so I'd have Johnston instead of Ramsdale 
Very, very interesting. But I think it, it does it does look like that uh, Ramsdale could be uh, potentially coming in. Um, obviously, we've mentioned James Madison as well. Outs. Who who do you think? Do you think there'll be any more outs at Arsenal? I'm hoping. I'm hoping so. We can't, as, as we just talked about earlier, we, we don't have the Europa League, so we don't need all those players. And the contracts, can we really afford to, like a Madison? I'm imagining, I'm imagining if Madison comes to Arsenal, I can see him getting 200k a week. I cannot see him getting any mm. less than that. Um, if a Ramsdale comes, let's say 70, 80k a week. If um, we sign like a, if we end up signing like an Awar, I can only see like 100k a week. So that would be too much in terms of um, salary per week and wages. So we're having to get rid of William. I don't think William will be an Arsenal player next season. If um, we don't sell him, or if no other team comes for him, I'm thinking they're going to cancel his contract, unfortunately. They'll just cut their losses because we didn't really sign him anyway. We got him on a free. Yeah. So I think they'll just end up canceling his contract. Kolasinac, we've already signed a backup left back. Kolasinac, why will he be used? Nowhere. And I saw him playing against Ibanian. Mm, no, he's not the answer. He's definitely not the answer. So I can see him leaving as well. Obviously, Jacques is about to join Roma. Some people yeah. will still keep uh, Jacques. If you're, if you're forcing me to keep him, I'll have him on the bench. But I think he's one of those players who've stayed for way too long. Those kind of players you have to get rid of. They've stayed for too long. You already know what you're going to get from him. So you have to get rid of him. Those are three. Um, Bellerin, if you're going to um, bring more money into the team, we have to sell players like that. Bellerin, we can get at least 15. Okay, people saying 20, 20 million, obviously it could be a lot, but you can get at least 15 million for Bellerin. Adding Ketia would sell him, would get a bit of money for him. Um, and then a couple of loan deals, maybe the likes of Nelson. Joe Willock, I'd keep, I'd keep Joe Willock for this season. I think he did um, so well for them. So for Newcastle last season, so I think I'd keep I'd keep Ranason is going to leave. The third choice goalkeeper is going to leave as well. So I think this July and the first week of August, it's going to be very busy. I think you're actually going to see a lot of Arsenal news on Twitter, daily basis. You're going yeah. to see a lot of news, a lot of news every single day, Monday to Sunday. So let's see. Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's kick things off with your uh, your first six fixtures of the Premier League. Now, you do start the Premier League season against Brentford away, yeah. and then you have Chelsea at home, Manchester City away, North City at home, Burnley away, and Tottenham at home. Tough, tough, uh, tough first six, but how many points would you be expecting to get out of those first six? Mm. We have to beat Brentford. We have to, we, you can't lose the first game against a promoted team. Um, Chelsea, surprisingly, we actually do beat Chelsea. I know they're a very good team, but we actually yeah. beat them home. Okay? So I think we're playing them at home. I'd say against Chelsea, let's at least get a draw. At least a draw, don't lose the game. Uh, Manchester City, we never get anything against Manchester City. So pff, I'm hoping this season we can try have a good uh, performance there. So maybe, maybe the first three games, I'd say four points and then Norwich, is it Norwich? Did you say Norwich? Norwich, yeah. It has to be three points and then Burnley, I think, away somewhere there. Yeah, Burnley away, yeah. It has to be three points and then which was the other one? Uh, Tottenham at home. Oh, Tottenham at home. Mm. I, I think from the first six games, I'd say we can afford to lose one and you can afford to draw one. So I'd say at least four wins, at least 13 points, but I'd be happy with 12 I'd say oh, that's not that wouldn't that wouldn't be that wouldn't be too uh, too bad obviously you would want to win the, the North London derby um I mean yeah another Tottenham manager against Arsenal like um yeah. I'm I'm actually I'm actually running out of of a of, of list of actual managers because it, it feels like it's up to about here it feels like it's up to about here in Tottenham managers and uh, now we've yeah. obviously got Nuno um, and it's um, and it's Tottenham, so yeah, that's going to be very interesting. But yeah, I think I think twelve points would be a very very good um, return from from that lot. And then your final six games, you have Southampton away, Manchester United at home, West Ham away, Leeds United at home, Newcastle away, and Everton at home. So by then, you'll obviously be hoping that you're still obviously in contention for a you know a top four place, maybe even a Europa League. Um, place as well and you know you'd obviously want to avoid that 
new um, Europa uh, Conference League um, yeah. for sure. But but the, the final six look much better on paper than they do uh, with the first six. Yeah, now let me tell you something about Arsenal. I'm seeing some... I, I started supporting Arsenal around 2004. Um, so I never really obviously paid attention that much like I am right now. But there's something I definitely know. Since 2009, we never win our first two games. The, uh, over the last time, mm. um, since 2009, that's about 14 seasons, we've only won our first two games twice out of the 14 seasons. We either usually draw, win one, or lose both, or win and lose. We never start the season with two wins back to back. The only time it happened was Emery's, season, um, Emery's second season. We won two games in, a, in, the, in the beginning, and I think a couple of seasons ago, we always tend to lose a few games. And that usually leaves us in a position where, after five games, oh, we're already six points behind Liverpool, we're already 12 points behind City, we're already six points behind Chelsea, and leaving yourself having that much pressure is usually terrible. Try and get a good start for once. Let's get a new start. Even around December, if you're fifth of, or something, somewhere like that, I'd be happy, but not 15th or 14th when you're already 10 points adrift. That is something we have to change. I'll tell you why we usually find ourselves in that position. Usually because we wait to, to buy our players way too late. I, I, I want Madison now. I don't want Madison after we've already played Brentford, City and Chelsea and we've already lost two games. I don't want that. I want Madison now. Get him to play a couple of preseason fixtures and let's get him ready for the season because losing the first few games always... It's usually not a good thing. Uh, we usually see Liverpool getting good starts like last season. I know it was a tough game against Leeds, but you got a win. A couple of seasons ago against Norwich, you got a win in the first game. So we also need to start our seasons like that. Um, the, last few, the last few games also as well, the last few games are usually very important. Usually now we tend to end our seasons well, like we did last season. I think we ended with like one defeat from the last 10. It, it was against you guys, Liverpool. To totally trashing us at home. So that was the last time I think we yeah. actually lost a game. All the others, we actually got good results. So um, the last few games, definitely very, very important as well. But if, um, if you're eight points clear of fifth position, you can afford to lose two of the final or five games, for example. Mm -hmm. But if you're chasing it, you leave too much to do, you have to win those games. So you saw Chelsea last season. They put themselves yeah. in such a comfortable position. They could even afford to lose against Aston Villa on the final day, knowing that Leicester wouldn't beat Tottenham, for example. So let's put let's not um, depend on other teams, though. Let's get our job done from the first game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I've got a couple of questions to for you before obviously we end. Um, one is a hypothetical question: If Arteta doesn't start well for Arsenal this season, do you think Arsenal would consider getting rid of him? Sorry, who was that? Sorry again. Uh, if if Arteta, if, if Mikel Arteta doesn't start well um, for Arsenal this season, do you think they would yeah. try and consider replacing him? Yeah, I think I think this is on they will. I think if it gets to January and we are like tenth again, I think they'll get rid of him. Because I also don't see I don't see a reason why you get rid of a manager in March. When it gets to March, I think it's already too late. I think that is. Um, a bit of um, desperation on, on a team side if you get rid of a manager in April around that time. So I think if we're in December or January and we've gotten the likes of Madison and we've made a lot of signings like we are looking like we will, and then we're still not performing well, we still don't know our first team, we still don't know which players can play in which positions, I think that would be the time because we saw Tuchel joining Chelsea around January and it changed mm -hmm. everything. So I think this time they'll consider. I think this time if we don't start well, um, like by January, I think they'll actually get rid of him, unfortunately. Ah, interesting, interesting. Uh, my second question is, what are your thoughts on the Cronkies? Because I know, obviously, that the whole Super League debacle thing, you know, this was obviously done by, obviously, FSG, Glazers, Cronkies, Levy. What What are your actual thoughts on them as as, as owners? Oh, I usually don't like them. I'll tell you why. Um, uh, for me, I, I want someone, anyone who owns my club, I want someone to care. That is the one, one word I usually use. I just want you to care. That's all, just care. 
Um, Abramovich for Chelsea, I can't lie. I'm, I've been jealous of Abramovich the last 20 years at Chelsea because he actually is a fan. He, before, I think, I think he went, I think, back to Russia or something the last couple of years. So he hasn't had, I think he's had problems with his visa or something. But over mm -hmm. the years, he usually had to, he usually went to every single game. When, when they lost, you'd feel the pain. You'd see the pain in his eyes. Um, he would commit, he'd um, be there. Leicester these days, see how their, their owner is. He is actually with the team. He actually goes down there and is close to the players. He knows the players' names. He knows which players are playing for his team. Can you even say that with Kronke? I don't think so. I, I'm actually very serious. I think if you sit down with Kronke and ask him to mention 15 Arsenal players, I don't think he will. I actually don't think he'll actually name for you 10 Arsenal players. I don't think he will because he's not. he doesn't care about the team. That's the problem. Yeah. He does not. He cares about the revenue. He cares about the benefits. He cares about the profits. That's what he cares about. Even though you're not getting that much because of you're not in European football, you're not doing well the last few seasons. For me, I usually don't like those owners. I think I don't think it's because they're American and they have the American culture, like people point out. I think you can have an American owner who actually cares. But for me, I usually don't like them because they don't care. You, you, Super League was literally the final nail in the coffin. We saw what they were trying to do. They were trying to turn um, um, European or English football, football that we love into NBA, into American yeah. football format, into Western Conference, Eastern Conference. They were trying to turn it into... There is even discussion about quarters, not 45 minutes halves. Quarters, let's have four quarters in football No. So all that is definitely people who don't care at all. So for me, I, I, I usually don't like them because they don't care. Um, so I think the best thing would be for, I'm hoping in the next five years, most of, most of them have sold the teams. That is what mm -hmm. I'm hoping for. Fingers crossed, my friend. Fingers crossed. Now, my final question for you is, with obviously no European football this season, you can obviously focus on the league, on the Cups, uh, and uh, etc., where would be an acceptable position for Arsenal? We have to get fourth. I don't know how I don't know how long before you can you cannot call yourselves a top team anymore because we've been out of the Champions League since 2017. We are going into 2022. If we don't get Champions League next year, we are going into 2023 without Champions League again. That will be almost and before you know it, it's 2027 and it's already 10 years out of the Champions League and you cannot actually call yourself a top team anymore because teams have overtaken us. Um, the only team that used to be ahead of us in the Premier League era was United. Chelsea came, they overtook us. Um, obviously, City came, they overtook us. Leicester came, they overtook us. Liverpool came, you've overtaken us. You've actually won a Premier League and the last time we won a Premier League was way back in 2004. Teams have overtaken us. I'm afraid Aston Villa and West Ham are starting to get uh, the grip of it as well. Will they overtake us as well? Maybe not in terms of history, not in terms of being a bigger club, but in terms of finishing the league. If a team finishes above you five consecutive seasons, you have to get worried. So for me, we have to get fourth. We have to get fourth. I know City will improve. I know you guys will have the likes of Van Dijk back. I know Chelsea are European champions. I know United will have definitely strengthened their team, but we have to try and get fourth. We have to try and get fourth. Fourth, 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 bust for you. Well, that, that, yeah. that's absolutely, that's absolutely, absolutely fascinating, and um, it's, it's fascinating to get your thoughts on obviously all things Arsenal as well. But Glenn, thank you very, very much for coming on to the to the channel and obviously giving me all insights into all things uh, Arsenal um, as well. Uh, where can we find you on the socials? Thank you very much for having me. Um, on YouTube, it's um, if you search for everything Arsenal or Glenn Kitely, whichever you just see me there. Um, also, I actually have a second channel. I don't post a lot, but I usually talk about other teams. It's everything football. And on, on, the, on Twitter, it's Glenn Kitely, uh, like it is on screen. On uh, Facebook, everything Arsenal, and the same on uh, Instagram as well. So thank you for having me, man. Absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. Yeah, go and follow uh, Glenn's uh, Glenn Everything Arsenal, and obviously I will leave his second channel in the description box and down below. Obviously, he does does your prediction channels uh, prediction uh, on that page, don't you? Yeah, yeah, and I hope this season you can get a win at Anfield. It's been way too long. <laughs> Nine years is way too long, so I'm hoping this season we don't get trashed at Anfield again. 
Nine years. Wow. I think you are you are definitely due a, a win at Anfield. But we'll see we'll see what happens in that. But thank you very much for coming on. Uh, and uh, yeah, guys, let us know. Uh, Arsenal fans, let us know how you are feeling in the comments down below as well. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.